Okay, I didn't get done what I was working on tonight, but uh, I wanted to try and do a, a benchmark, a test to just show how much you could fill up, how big a space you can use uh, with just using terrain blocks to fill out. And then I was going to come back in a video afterwards and show just how much the models affect the gameplay. But I didn't get there, so I'm just going to give you a little teaser of what's going on. So what I've done is, uh, let me change away from the fill bucket here. So I've just laid this uh, pavement down, this asphalt down the middle. I kind of used a bunch of terrain blocks to build up the city here. I put kind of a, uh, a dock area over here, a little bit like Secan. Uh, a bunch of different office buildings all built up with different patterns. Trying to purposely use different patterns to fill each building out so there's a variety and it's not just a few tiles. So I've got red, white, gray buildings and different patterns thereof. And then I decided, well, I'm going to show you how easy it is. This is also um, a texture I'm putting into back in pack three of like some rundown walls and stuff. Because I thought, I got the idea because I used to play paintball in Tawasson. And we had some rundown looking walls and props and stuff that were really cool. And they looked like buildings, but they were only one sided walls sort of thing. So I thought, well... I'm going to make a terrain pack that kind of has some rundown building shapes and stuff in it as well. And then tonight I was looking at those when I was building up the city and I thought, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make a maze. I'm just going to kind of make a maze thing just as a little demo built into this level. And so I did that over here. And I'm just going to jump in and do a, just a run through and a walk through to show how this is. And uh, I'll pull up the... Um, I'll pull up the counter. Well, I, mean, I won't even pull up the counter. I'll do that once I fill out the map. So my idea is to do a 100 by 100 map to start with. I might even move that up to like a 200 by 200 or something. I want to like load this down and show just how little resources it takes to run when you're using uh, the terrain tiles to fill in the background. So, I mean, ideally you wouldn't be using these as your city per se. You would have maybe your city models here on both sides of the street. That's where all the action is, the main area for the player. And then maybe have raised terrace and then how to use these tiles to fill in the background. So you'd have, you know, a raised tile set up here and you'd have another whole row of apartments or whatever. Another row of business buildings or off in the distance where the player doesn't really go. Now, you could use these. They're fine. They're good enough. You could totally use them in Game Engine, especially... If you're going to be using maybe more of a Chiba style or a, a, a lower polygon model like, like some of the models I've got going on right now. But if you start to put in bigger bigger polygons, these are pretty much only, only better as fill out to flush out the area so that you can really add that depth to your level design. So anyway, I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to show you. And uh, the Jenny model is going to appear over here in this maze and I'm just going to wander my way out and uh, then run over to the city and show you. I think I'll do the room, I think I'll do the game pad. So you can see here the corrugated metal. I didn't do anything fancy with the floor, it's just a filler floor, but uh, you could uh, totally, I'm just using the joystick here, I don't use it that often, so. Gotta walk around these walls. But you can see how you could totally use this for a modern dungeon. Let me just uh, zoom in a bit because if I set my camera a little closer, you can actually see the switch back to keyboard and mouse just because you see the quality of that corrugated metal and the patchwork on the walls. Like It's still pretty darn good. And you could make some pretty good dungeons using this technique. There we go. Wander our way out. And of course, I didn't put any thought into the dungeon. I just slapped down a, a bunch of adjoining bricks and pumped them up out of the ground. But you could totally see how this could be used. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I just uh, I shifted my focus out of the game. Now it does look like, I'm just looking at this here, it looks like I might have a normal map line in here that I need to fix. Yeah, I do. i got a normal map edge there. Not really a big deal on the corrugated, but I've been trying to fix those as I discover them. 
So, oh, it didn't raise that one. That brings me to the edge of the map. Again, and, sorry, didn't turn that off. You could use that totally even as a floor, right? So that's the great thing about these being terrains, is that you can have a different floor terrain laid down and just pump up your map or whatever you want to do, right? Now, there's the two other ones. So there's, this one's kind of a, a bit of a brownie one. Then I've got, and the corrugated roof is different there. You can see it's like a gray-white. But then I come over here, and it's more like a rusty patch. Just zoom out a little bit here. More like a rusty patch, scabbed together. A little bit more, more uh, repair needed there. And it's more of a white wall patchwork. And then this one's a green patchwork. And you can see there that it's more of a camo-y green surface space on that. So, yeah. So anyway, that's that. I just I just thought that would be fun to just try out and do tonight. I was playing around. Now I'm just going to zip over to the city here. You can see the city, how I've got different buildings, different layouts. I'll walk over here so you can see the quality of the walls. Zoom in. So you see, you could totally use these. It's not their primary intent, but you definitely could use these to flush out your own city. I mean, it's all there, right? We'll go over here. Oh, there's a red brick wall. We'll zoom in. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit of clipping in the, a uh, little bit of clipping in the camera there. And then across the street here, we've got the gray brick. Here's the white brick. And you can see there's, you know, windows and textures all the way down the alleyways, too. And then the roof, so you can see it's like an asphalt roof with a little bit of moss growing on it. I kind of kept with the same roof for all of them. I didn't vary that up any. I, I, I always like the overgrown asphalt look, so. So I kept with, again, clipping because I got these buildings close. Ideally, I guess you'd change your camera out or make the clippings different, but... And there you go, all glass fronts with doors to go into buildings. And then, oh, come across this way. Again, I don't have the camera ideally set, so. And there's the secan material. Here I've used it to form up a wall. Just got some groundwork there. That's like Irish cliff or grass or something. Just one of the randoms I threw in there. Again, there's all four sides of the buildings have windows and textures and stuff and you don't have to have individual window models in there or anything so it's not using any resources and then here you got the multi-level stack secan stuff going on i thought it'd be good to throw that in because every city's got a little industrial area you know shipping and receiving so i added the water at the edge just for fun and then i sank one into the ground here let's uh let's just walk over here a little bit Zoom in. So I sank this one down in the ground. Oh yeah, so it's the Irish cliffs texture I used here, terrain, from uh, back in pack ones. You can see that nice kind of slaty look with a little bit of mossy grass. Great for traveling up mountain slopes and things where you've got cliffs and paths built in. Um, but here you can see the secan texture. And in here, it's dropped into the ground so it could easily be like the top of a bunker or the top of an underground assembly, which you've then got a dungeon going into or something. So lots of uses, and here I've just used it for a, a surrounding wall. Simple metal wall, surrounds everything. You could do that for like a hill fort or something, a modern post-apocalyptic. Now let's just pull up. Let's just pull up the, uh, not the debug window, the performance meter. Uh, we'll pull up type one. So CPU usage, extremely low. There was a spike there as it started, but I'm just going to run around here, and you can see that I'm not using much for CPU. It's staying pretty flat with all of this. Nothing extra being rendered out. Go over here to an area I didn't go before. Walk in between the back alley. Walk past this big business building with a thousand doors on it. I put a whole bunch of doors on here just to show you can do whatever through one window in the middle. Um, now I'm going to switch CPU uh, meters away from that one. 
So you can see the uh, renderings in the pink, so let's go to performance meter type 2. I don't really like this one. It jumps around, doesn't really tell you much of anything. Um, yeah. CPU working at about 48. Run around 47. Actually seems to drop a little bit. <laughs> Not a lot there. I don't like that view though. Let's go to the third one, see how it looks. I'm not, I actually don't really like much of their performance meters at all. This one's probably the best one. But if you look up here, so I mean milliseconds total to render out everything on screen, I'm guessing. They don't really tell you what. Here's you know the usage to update and yeah. They don't give you a whole lot of uh, this is just what each one of these are using in the time frame it takes to, to refresh them all. So it doesn't really tell you a lot about what's going on in here, but even with that, you can see that those are extremely low. And I've already got a pretty full map. I mean, the map that's populated now is more than more than 50 by 50. So the links out of there. Like I say, the performance meter doesn't show you a huge amount of information really good, like some of those frames per seconds or polygons per seconds or actual real workload. However, what you do get is you get to see what's going on. So this map here is, I believe I've scaled this to map settings. What am I setting at? I'm at 100 by 100 on my map settings. And so I'm going to say that, you know, that's about 100 across. They're not all filled. That's probably like, it's probably 75, 75 by 50 area that would be completely plugged with terrain stuff. And you saw that's using almost nothing of my uh, AMD processor. So, so I'm going to fill this all out to 100 by 100. And it's probably not even going to be much more than that. Like, like it's pretty efficient when you use terrains like so much more uh, i could throw a few models in now but i'm going to wait until i get this scaled up i might even scale this up to 200 by 200 and show you that i'll probably show you at 100 by 100 and then again at 200 by 200 as i want to do some thorough tests here and get some numbers written down but that's all i want to show you for the night i'm just puttering away playing a little bit oh and all this all this here Everything you've seen here, except for the, the Irish cliff terrain texture, is all in, uh, oh, um, and the, this little chunk, this one, they're all in back, that's in back and pack one. Everything else here is in back and pack three. So, oh, no, wait, this, so this, ter this, uh, this asphalt terrain is also back and pack one. But these, all the building stuff, that's all back and pack three. Not that it matters at this point in time. I'm, I'm not finished gathering the resources for that. I am trying to make each back and pack just a little bit better or at least equal to the last one. As I'm learning more and putting more together and figuring out what resources people may need to make the most out of this game engine and to best benefit the community, um, I'm just trying to put that much more work in and get you that much better of a product for like pennies. So, all right, have a great night. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully I got a little bit more to report on this progress.